What's up everybody, Corey here, Golden Press Studio, and today I'm really excited. We are gonna be showing you guys my process for designing t-shirts as well as showcasing some really cool new brushes that are gonna speed up your workflow. Stoked to see you guys. Uh, yeah, like I said, we're gonna be doing some t-shirt designing today. Uh, you know, I've shown you guys uh, a video a while, while back about uh, how I design t-shirts today. Uh, we're gonna do uh, some more of that. And in this video, you're gonna see, uh, obviously, like I mentioned, uh, some new really cool uh, Procreate brushes that I created that are designed to speed up your workflow, specifically when it comes to doing more like traditional tattoo style designs, which is gonna be pretty sick. Uh, as well as I wanna be giving you guys some practical designing tips that you're gonna be able to just, yeah, utilize, kinda learn some stuff, so, uh, I don't think it'll be pretty rad. So let's jump into the iPad and uh, start doing some fun things. The first thing I wanna cover with you guys are the tools that I'm gonna be utilizing to create this design. If you know my style at all, you know I do a lot of American traditional style tattoo designs. I wanna to make these cool brushes that kinda of speed up that workflow. In American traditional tattoo designs, there's often a lot of patterns. And so that's what this brush pack uh, kind of showcases and so I'm calling it the trad pattern brush pack and this is it right here just a handful of brushes um, that can offer just some cool things uh, kind of down here and just want to show you guys some of this stuff and we're gonna be using some of these brushes right here is just this like koi fish fish scale pattern um, that you can just paint in and it just has this excellent repeating pattern this is a pattern that I use all the time in designs, but it's kind of tedious to uh, draw out. This is another version of that that has just like this little extra line just for some more detail going on. Something about all these brushes that I recommend and I encourage you uh, is I, I like to call these like a sketch phase type of brush. Whenever I design, I'm starting off with pencil sketches, uh, getting the rough concept of my designs, and then what I like to do is uh, go in afterwards and ink the design and kind of finalize it. Uh, and I recommend all people design like that. I don't know, you, I, mean, I guess you can do whatever you want, but that's how I design. I'll kind of go into a little more detail uh, when we check out a couple more of these brushes of why uh, I'm saying that these are like the sketch phase for you. We got this cool little dot pattern, uh, another cool one. And so as you can see, this one's kind of small and so for this whole section, um, from this brick pattern down to the fish scales, uh, something that I wasn't able to like bake in uh, is, uh, you know, you're drawing out your design. Typically in Procreate, if you want your brush to be bigger, uh, you're just gonna grab this slider and pull it up to a larger size. Um, but what this does is it just makes the, uh, basically the, the pencil tip of your brush larger, but it doesn't change the actual uh, design size. And the only way to go about doing that, I'll give you a quick little rundown. Uh, you're just gonna go, these. it's just with uh, this section right here of brushes. You're just gonna click on the brush and then you're gonna touch the brush one more time. And it'll maybe be uh, your settings like something like this. You wanna go down to your grain and you can just go to scale. And as you can see, you can just up that scale size if you wanna change the size of, uh, of like the texture of the brush. And so I know it's not like the most streamlined process, but uh, it's how it works. So there you go. Uh, up here, these are kind of like more chain style brushes uh, that are also kind of neat. Uh, just give you a quick rundown, real, real quick. Uh, and you just basically draw a line and it creates a chain. And this one you can scale up to larger sizes. Uh, and like I said, these are sketch brushes. This is kind of what I mean. Uh, when it comes to things like these chains, if you do harsh lines, uh, you can kind of see that sometimes like the chain links don't match up perfectly. Uh, or like if you're doing too sharp of stuff, you can see it does that. Or sometimes the first one will get weird if you kind of go slow with your line. Um, but sketch brushes, they're just kind of there to speed up your workflow. Today, what I want to draw is a traditional vase uh, and I think we're gonna incorporate a snake into it as well. Uh, vases are really cool because they often have lots of patterns in them, uh, and so they kind of showcase some of these brushes, how they work, and give you the rundown on how I draw some of these things. 
So first thing I want to do is a uh, great feature within Procreate is uh, the symmetry tool. And so I'm just gonna hit the wrench, go to canvas, uh, go to edit drawing guide. You know, yours will typically look something like that. Uh, and you're gonna swing on over to symmetry and uh, mine's set to vertical. And so then I'm gonna hit done. And now when I draw lines, uh, we got some uh, symmetrical lines happening and that's gonna be really helpful when we're drawing uh, this vase. So uh, let's do it, let's draw a vase. First thing I wanna do, draw the base of the vase and uh, kind of draw the form of it. So here we go. It's gonna draw a line, snap it with my finger and I'm just gonna go up and give it just a little arc and again, try to bring it straight across. And I'm gonna just give it uh, another little bump up just to create this uh, kind of base of the vase. And then we just wanna bring it up like this, just nice little uh, curvy, curvy dome of a vase. Uh, and then it's gonna throw on another little lip up here. And you just yeah, draw a straight line Curve it around a little bit. Get a nice another little lip. That one might be too big. Eh, I think I'm cool with it. Then what I'm gonna do is gonna bring it up like this. Kind of a bit of a curve. Yeah, I dig that. And then we're gonna give it another lip. And this one, uh, kind of like how we did with this one, we have a straight bottom and then curved uh, top. Uh, we're gonna do the opposite of that. So we'll give it a straight top and curve down the bottom a little bit. And there we go. He just drew a vase. Pretty sick, and then I'm gonna clean up these lines, just make them a little bolder. For this section, I wanna just do some, some texture lines. The key to designing, everybody, is uh, just draw more lines, and the more lines you draw, uh, the cooler they're gonna, they're gonna look. When it comes to drawing vases, I like to just break it up into a few different sections um, so we can kind of establish where we want our patterns. Um, and it's really just like basically breaking up into a couple different lines. All right, now what we can do is start filling uh, this vase in with some patterns, with some texture, with some stuff going on. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do real quick, just to uh, make it easier on myself, is with these patterns, I'm gonna just go up and make a new layer. And I'm gonna go to uh, my Trad Pattern Brush Pack and uh, start choosing some patterns to work with. So I think that one of the first patterns I wanna to use today is this fish scale pattern, because I think it's pretty sick. Just paint it in. And we can go outside the lines a little bit. Um, it's not that big a deal, because we're on a new layer, and we can uh, clean it up. And I'm also gonna aim, uh, you know, we have this, I don't know if you guys can see it super clearly, but there's a slight subtle uh, center line. And I'm just gonna hit my little arrow and position this so uh, it's kind of more symmetrical. Basically, I want this middle piece to uh, be in the middle. Hop over to my eraser and erase anything that's sticking out. Already, like that looks really rad. A nice cool pattern on this vase. Looking slick. Uh, let's add some more patterns to this. So we can swing on over here to our pattern brush and uh, we're gonna, I wanna do this arc two. Um, this is a pattern that I draw all the time. Again, I'm gonna hop on a new layer and I'm just gonna draw a straight line uh, just across the bottom, just like that. And snap it, finger snap, cool. Um, and uh, and uh, as you can see, like the closer I get, they're kind of overlapping. I'm just gonna try to make them uh, match up to each other like that. Again, trying to make the middle uh, kind of fit just right. Something like that. And then just erase the excess. I'll pull it down a little bit so it matches up with the bottom of the vase. There we go. And erase the excess. Actually it might make that a little bit larger. Just scale it up. Uh, just so it kind of matches with the rest of the design. Cool, and let's do uh, that same pattern again. Uh, just up at the top. And we'll just flip this upside down. And now that I flip my canvas, now my pattern is gonna be pointing upward. I actually wanna to try to match that scale, so I'm just gonna raise that up and do that. That's pretty close. And we're gonna put this right there. Snap it, hold it together. 
That seems fine. Oh. We're still on that same layer, but it's okay. And maybe scale it down a little bit. I wanna get it pretty close to this one. That seems good. And match it up, bring it down a little. This has got some breathing room. And then erase the excess, no big deal. You guys can see already, we got a pretty sick looking vase coming to life. Um, I think I'm gonna use, uh, we can just merge those layers, that's fine. Um, and then I think I'm actually gonna use one more different brush pack that I have um, just to quickly make this design flow. And it's gonna be uh, another one of my brush packs, the Tattoo Flower Pack. I use this all the time just to speed up my workflow when I'm doing designs quickly. Um, you know, if you're doing t-shirt designs, that kind of thing. We wanna be moving fast for clients. We wanna be getting things rolling. Uh, so I just, I love these brushes. So head over here, I'm gonna go down to my Flower Tattoo Pack. I got all these different little standard traditional flowers. Just gonna choose one. Um, I'm on a new layer and I'm just gonna drop it there and size it up to how I want it. Maybe rotate it a little. Maybe make it a little smaller. Yeah. Put it in the corner. Boom. We got ourselves a little flower and I'm just gonna like duplicate that and uh, reflect it with my flip horizontal, pull it over, line it up, just make it the same as the other one. And now we got some cool little flowers and now I'm just gonna draw in a couple leaves. Pretty simple to draw leaves. You just do a little like swoop and make it a point, bring it in, which I actually want this to be symmetrical. So we're gonna go on, we just merge all that. We got our assisted uh, symmetrical layer going. Point, leaf, Dig that, let's do one more little leaf uh, just to fill in that space. And I'll draw some little inner lines to like the center of the leaf. Got some leaves and so now what I wanna do is just fill in black in some of these areas real quick or technically red, uh, but just to add some contrast to the design. We got a pretty sick looking vase. You know, we're designing the t-shirt design. Whenever I design t-shirt designs, my goal for it is to fill up like the back of the shirt uh, really well. What I wanna do with this, like right now, if you printed like a skinny vase or whatnot on the back of a shirt, it's gonna be like at its you know, widest, it's probably gonna be like six to eight inches wide. And we want this to like really fill out the back. So I'm just gonna add some other stuff to the design um, just to fill in this kind of negative space that we got. We got some leaves on here. This is looking cool. It's starting to fill out the back of the shirt. And now what I want to do is add one more element to this design uh, that's just gonna kind of make it extra cool. We're gonna draw a snake. Snakes are super fun, super rad. And I'm gonna get, give you kind of like the basic guide of uh, just drawing a snake. First thing I wanna do, hop on a new layer. What I want to do is figure out the structure of the snake, what the snake's gonna be doing. I want it to be coming out of the top of the vase. Um, and so I'll grab my trad uh, pattern brush pack and up here there's this brush called snake form uh, And it's a really sick brush because uh, it just helps you be able to draw a snake, you know uh, to Figure out kind of like the width and the scale and, and the direction of the snakes going like if if I was drawing a snake like this, you know, I can see uh, Where the snakes overlapping, you know, you want it to curl up like that and this just gives me a really nice form of uh, when I'm drawing a snake, it's just a good, I use this all the time for sketching. And then you can just start following that kind of like outside line. And then obviously at the bottom, you're gonna taper the tail off. And up at the top, you're gonna put in a head on my new layer. And I just wanna kind of establish where the snake's going, the size of this snake, something like that. I'm just gonna reposition it a little bit to get it exactly where I want it. It's gonna do just like an oval, kind of like this, let it snap even, and just kind of figure out the basic head shape of this snake. And we can kind of position it how we want, because the snake's mouth is gonna be open, uh, and that seems probably reasonable. And then we want the bottom of the jaw down here, and we can even do like a little line like this, just to help us visualize how wide the snake's mouth is gonna be open. 
So maybe something like that. And like I said, we're gonna do this skinny uh, oval just like that. And as you can see, we're just establishing this basic concept of the shape of this snake. And you know, we can even throw some other lines down this way to just help us know just the structure where the snake is going. Next thing we want to do is uh, start giving these little bumps for the eyes. Um, you know, like inside the snake's skull, he's got his eyeballs and uh, the bones are just going to bump over that eye. And so that's just going to go somewhere like, you know, like his eye is going to be somewhere around that point. Uh, and so we got the, the body of the snake, it's going to curve up. And uh, I, I I think it accentuates the bone of the eye if it like bumps ever so slightly down and then swings back up, just something like that. And I think that that'll probably work. Um, and we're in the sketch phase, so we can just keep messing with these lines and finessing them. We're gonna bring it over to the front. Um, this is kind of gonna be where like its nose is. Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, its mouth is gonna come down something like that, nice, big and open. And then I'll throw one more little bump right here. And this is like its other eye over there, like we can kind of see it. So we're gonna handle the bottom of the jaw and we're just gonna have it curve and do like a little bit of like a swoosh going, something like that. This is like super exaggerated, but uh, we just want it to curve around a little bit and then uh, rise a little bit up this way. And that's just gonna give a little more kind of shape to the jaw. Now if we want, we can even like make a new layer, make this sketch layer a lot more faint and really start kind of going in and uh, applying uh, more detail to the snake on a new layer, other layers drop down and we're just gonna kind of fill this out, give it just some more structure. This line. It's gonna kind of curve up following that shape of the jaw that we, we kind of established. Coming back up around. And then we got this other extra bump for its other eye over there. We can just draw in on eye. You know, we, this is kind of the general area we want it. And, you know, we just do like a little, I don't know, this little snaky shape eye. Something like that. Do a circle in the middle. little line like that. We're just kind of establishing things. Next thing I want to do is just these little like curve things on the lips of the snake. I'm just going to erase that line a little bit so I can go off of these curves. Just rough sketching it right now, you know, and these are all going to kind of meet together. Same thing with this bottom one, connecting with the other guys. Let me throw some teeth on this bad boy. They're just kind of these little points. Nice. We'll do a secondary one. This one, similar size as the other one. Maybe it's slightly smaller. Just, you know, one at the tip, one pulled back a little bit. And then we can uh, do this. This is like a, like a, a key line uh, in snakes, just like that little curve just shows like his mouth opening up. And we're gonna do a little tongue. You need to start your tongue, come it off like this. You know, snake tongue, whippy tongue. A little forked tongue guy, and uh, maybe like erase that line a little bit just to have the the tongue be able to come off just like so. Then we'll have one tooth back here that's kind of in front of that tongue, and another tooth that's behind the tongue. So cool, that's looking rad. Uh, and now we just kind of got to finish out the body. Uh, we got this line. This is kind of like the center line of the snake and it kind of helps divide uh, the top of the snake uh, from the belly of the snake. So you can just do a nice little curve coming off of that. And then uh, we'll, we'll kind of do the belly of the snake, which I just do with some curves where, you know, we kind of have like the neck that's kind of coming off. So it kind of swivel a little bit. And then we just start doing these little curve pattern, you know. Something like that, that seems fine. You know, obviously I'm going deeper into the, the vase, but we can always erase it back. We got the top section of the snake, and this is where we can just start utilizing uh, that pattern brush. Uh, snake scales are often quite tedious to draw, 
and so especially for a simple design like this, let's grab that trad pattern, grab snake scales, uh, just chose snake scales two, seems good. And, uh, and then, so whatever direction your canvas is going, that's kind of the direction of the scales. So as you see, pull these scales this way. If I turn my canvas this way, the scales are now kind of going at a different angle. And so I just want to have my canvas at the angle that the snake's kind of going. And you can just kind of finesse it, which actually I want to go on another layer uh, when I'm doing this so that I can erase away. That seems pretty good. And just kind of erase away the excess, just like what we've been talking about. Uh, if you're drawing like a full, like swervy type of snake, uh, when it comes to these scales, uh, like I was saying, what I typically do is I'll use them as a general reference of like, all right, the body's going this direction, so I'm gonna paint them in that direction. Like I was showing, I'm gonna rotate the canvas again, choose another direction for the next direction of the body of the snake, and then I just have to kind of fill in uh, how it goes, because th these scales, they're not going to like follow the direction uh, that the snake is going. You know, they just kind of are baked in to go one way, whichever way your canvas is facing. And then uh, the last thing I want to do with this kind of sketch design, I'll just add some leaves popping out of, uh, popping out of the, the vase uh, just to kind of fill in so it doesn't just look like, like this post of a snake is popping out. Uh, it kind of gives it a little more uh, balance. Make a new layer and I'm going to draw in a couple more leaves. And there we go. We got a pretty sick looking snake design uh, going on. And the next step for my drawing process is I'm gonna start inking the design, start filling it in. You guys have seen me do this kind of thing before. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna start adding more detail, more detail to the whole design. There we go, man. That is a finished t-shirt design. Bop, bada, boom, bada, bop, bam, pow. Looks freaking sick. And you got a cool looking design. If you want, you could add some texture to it. I got plenty of texture brushes you can pick up and apply that, but I think it looks pretty rad. How it is, freaking banger design. And you guys now know how to make this. Like I said many times in this video, we have this new Trad Pattern Brush Pack available now. Um, you know, it's so good to just help your sketch process speed up. You can, you know, use these brushes for a variety of different designs. Uh, and I know I'm gonna be using them all the time. I'm really psyched on them. Uh, they're gonna be really speeding up my workflow. So give them a check out, go to the website, peep those things. Uh, and get out there and design some awesome t-shirts. You know, design some snakes, design some vases, draw some leaves, and have an awesome time. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this whole time in this video. I know it was a long one, but I hope you learned something. I hope uh, you're having an excellent day, and we'll see you there. We'll see you in the air, and we'll arf on you later, little doggies. Arf!